Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be a um, response to some subscriber feedback that I received on one of the Deploying Bind DNS for Your Home Lab videos that, that I made. Before I dive into that though, I want to uh, remind you that if you enjoy the content of the video, make sure you click like and also subscribe to the channel and ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when um, new content is made available. So I want to thank subscriber Alex for posting this question at the end of, I believe, part one of the uh, Deploying Bind DNS for Your Home Lab. And to give you a little background uh, uh, about that, that video as it pertains to Alex's question, is I configured that server to be a forwarder. And so rather than always reaching out to the root name servers for queries that it doesn't, it doesn't know the answer to or is not authoritative for, it's going to reach out to one of Google's DNS servers, and in, in particular 8.8.8.8, to be able to, to find the, the answer to a, a query. So Alex asked, how can you tell the name resolution is done by Google DNS rather than the local DNS? Can you try to use dig at localhost www.google.com plus trace um, to confirm you get name resolution from Google DNS or use TCP dump to check whether you get DNS traffic from 8.8.8.8. So it's a great question and quite frankly it's one I probably should have um, answered in, in those, those first couple of videos because anytime you're building something, especially if you're building it for production, you always want to verify that the the results of whatever application that, that, that you're, you're running are, are valid results, such as it is entirely possible that at, at, at the end of those videos, you know, when I was getting my um, name resolution, it's entirely possible that that could be coming from the root name servers, or not from the root name servers themselves, but that query would go to the root name servers and eventually be sent to the authoritative um, DNS server for w whatever zones I, I, I was I was looking up, rather than that being sent to the the, the forwarder. So so you always want to um, to verify that the good results that you're getting are truly coming from from where they are. And Alex mentioned uh, either using TCP dump or dig plus trace. Uh, I used, or rather, I tried to use dig plus trace, and uh, I, I I got information back from it. However, it wasn't enough to, to um, sol solve my own quandary about is it is the the traffic actually making it where where it, it, it needs to go and I chalk that up to the fact that I don't use dig plus trace um, hardly ever not that, that I avoid using it it's just a, 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 a tool that I haven't used much I've used dig just for, for basic lookups and such but the the plus trace feature I'm not as familiar with and so I was probably misinterpreting some of the information that I got from it TCP dump, however, is kind of a go-to tool for me for looking at anything involving net network traffic. On the Windows world, I love using Wireshark. Now, I'll be the first to say I'm not a master of, of TCP dump, but the, the times that I use it, the things I use it for, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly um, familiar with. So if you out there watching this are a TCP dump master and you see a, a better way for for me to test this traffic by all means sound off in the comments because I'm always looking for for better ways to, to do things so I figured the, kind of the 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 best way to both answer Alex and and kind of explain what's going on is by making a video about it and demonstrating how to do these things so what I have here is our um, demo client and I have two terminal windows open. One is for the um, demo name server that, that we made. And I went ahead and SSH'd in and then sudo-i to, to get into root just to make life a little bit easier um, doing some of these tasks. And I have our demo client. First thing I'm going to do is verify IP address. This should end in .251 for the client. Let me just make sure IP adder show. And yes, client is 192.168.1.251. The name server should be 250. So let's just make 100% sure. And it is 192.168.1.250. So those those are going to be Im important for us. And just to review, I'm going to clear the screen here and then use vi to open at cnamed.conf. 
and just to review the um, the configuration in question or to scroll down is the fact that we we have uh, recursion on and we have forwarder set up for 8.8.8.8 so what should happen because of this configuration for queries that this server can't answer it should immediately forward those to 8.8.8.8 and not forward to the root name servers so I'm going to use QI to get out of VI always a joke about VI it takes longer to exit the program than it does to actually do the text editing the text editing that you want of course I don't believe that I love VI anyway so what I'm going to do now is um, install TCP dump and if you're not sure if you have TCP dump installed you can do which TCP dump and there is nothing uh, there, there, there is no uh, program named TCP dump in any of the the, the, um, the path uh, locations so to install it is very easy you use your favorite package ma package manager in this case I'm going to use DNF so DNF install TCP dump and it found it I do want to install it, it takes just a moment or so because it's a pretty lightweight program we do which TCP dump and we now have TCP dump so let me clear my screen again so I'm going to start TCP dump and again there, there, there are a myriad of, of um, switches that you can use for it and, and, and various um, s syntax this is kind of a just a little high level overview of, of, of what I'm wanting to do because really all I'm interested in is traffic that's dealing with port 53 because that's our DNS port so I'll do TCP dump I'm going to use dash NN and what that's going to do is show as much stuff as numbers as possible because what I don't want is um, my name server trying to do DNS queries at the same time of me wanting to look at the traffic from my client server and looking at at, at, at just DNS traffic that, 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 that would be, be pretty tough to unravel so we're, I'm telling TCP dump to just, just show me numbers num numerical IP address um, numbers for the port all that good stuff and then I'm going to tell it port 53 so I want to see any traffic that is inbound to port 53 or outbound destined for port 53 I'll press enter so at this point TCP dump is is listening to to my um, interface and showing me any traffic that is inbound to port 53 or is going out the the interface on port 53 no traffic right now because I have nothing else on my network that is using NS demo as my name server so I'm going to go back to my client server here to type to clear not client and let's dig I'll go ahead and explicitly tell it to use the D nope, that's my production DNS server explicitly use that DNS server even though it's 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 configured to use it and we want to dig google.com and we get a response and we get some answers for google.com so if we come over to our name server we have we have some output from TCP dump and as we expect we have um, a query that or rather traffic coming from dot two five one which is that the DNS client and that is destined there we go and that is destined for 250 which is our name server on port 53 and it's an a query for www.google.com and then the next thing that we see is the name server sending traffic to 8.8.8.8.53 with the a query for www.google.com this is exactly what we expect to see the moment that our name server gets the query ships it off to to Google now there are some other um, qu queries that, that that also happen but again notice how this is heading to uh, the name server to Google and Google is, is is answering these queries eventually Google answers the a query for www.google.com and we see that here coming from 8.8.8 port 53 to our port that is on 
our name server and there's the name of the query and notice that the first answer a 64 233 185 103 we'll go ahead and look here and we see that is the first a query that came out in the answer section for dig so there's our our traffic again Google coming to our name server and eventually we will see traffic that's going from our name server to our client and that's where we see in this line here 192.168.1.250.53 and that traffic is destined back to our name server I'm not not back to our name server I'm sorry back to our client and that has within it the A records or rather the resolution of the A records that, that, that our name server received from Google so at this point I'm going to stop the um, the packet capture here let's clear the screen and so with that we have proof positive our, our name server got the query sent it off to Google Google answered it or rather Google answered the query back to the name server which then handed it back over to the the client so let me clear the screen here sometimes just seeing that isn't good enough in, in, in particular if you're wanting to learn about DNS well even though yeah we clearly went to Google what what would this look like if we didn't do forwarding and and we were we were using the um, the the root name servers so to test that real quick what we can do I'm going to go back into named.conf and we can either delete the lines about forwarders or we can comment them out I'm going to choose to comment them out so slash star you can do a uh, multi-line comment with that star type slash so that comments out everything between so that would be forwarders the 8.8.8.8 and the curly braces I'll use colon X to save and exit VI some people use QW for that for this to take effect I need to restart my name server so restart name D or system CTL restart name D and system CTL status name D I'll make sure it's running and it is running and we're gonna set up TCP dump again dash in in port 50 Three. So now we're going to do our dig at the name server itself, www.google.com. Ah, and we did not. I know what's going on there. I was using my production name server instead of my lab name server. My apologies for that. 250 so now we'll see some traffic yep and there it goes I'm gonna go ahead and do control C to to stop um, TCP dump so let's scroll back up here and first off we see that we have the packet from our client coming to our name server and it's the a record request for www.google.com and then if you notice from our name server it is not sending to 8.8.8.8 it's sending to 199.7.3.7.83.42 and eventually that is going to to respond to our name server and this is going to go through a, a couple of, of iterations of this as it gathers some some more information of which eventually we will have the traffic sent from our name server keep scrolling through here it'll be one of the last things that we have and that traffic is going to come from our name server back to our client server I'm looking for that 251 in here it'll be in there somewhere I'm sure you use the viewers if you're looking at this you've probably spotted it before I I have the point being is that the traffic was sent from 
our name server because our name server is not going to know about www.google.com, especially since I restarted the name D service. Any kind of caching that was done is now gone. And it's sending that to name servers that are root name servers or the name server for .com and then eventually the name server for, for, for google.com rather than immediately forwarding to 8.8.8.8. So again, to, to answer Alex's question, I use TCP dump to, to, to find that. And for, 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 for everyone else, I hope that, that, that you found this useful as far as how you would use a, a tool like TCP dump to verify that traffic truly is going the the the, the way that you intended and also uh, a little bit of um, comfort for, for those that that followed my guide about setting up the forwarding name server you you have a hopefully a a, a, a bit more confidence that the configuration that I use will, will in fact forward the uh, the the queries as you would like them to, to, to be forwarded. So again, if you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure that, that you click like, also subscribe to the channel and ring the bell, and don't hesitate to, to, to be like Alex and leave feedback on, on any of the videos that I produce. I, I, I love to get the feedback just to, to at, at the very least, Im, improve with what I'm doing and also to, to be able to answer some, some uh, questions as well because the, the goals of these more instructional videos is to to, to try to help folks become a little bit more knowledgeable about the, the subject matter and quite frankly for, for me to get feedback from all of you to, to improve myself as well. So thanks for, for taking the time to watch and I'll see you the next time.